Hi you guys, so in my last video I was talking about how I was going to be doing a read aloud, which is basically, you know how I really liked um, when people read like the picture books on camera, but I would, but um, I decided I would do that, but um, I have done a video like that already, but I thought, well, if you're going to read picture books, why not read, um, chapter books. Basically, I'm going to be reading a chapter book, and this is just, like, the first chapter, and then my next video, my, um, next video, read aloud number two, will be doing, like, the next chapter, and so on and so forth, and that's what I'm going to be reading this book right today. It's called The Captain's Bo Dog by Roland Smith, and... It's My Journey with the Lewis and Clark Tribe, but it's actually really, really great book. I read this last year, and it's really amazing, so I'm just going to start reading this right now. Alright. Eighteen oh eight, on a vast prairie east of the Rocky Mountains. John Coulter gallops into camp. Jumps off his horse and shouts, Seaman! Good Lord! Is that really you? We thought you were dead. He falls to his knees in front of me and takes a handful of fur on either side of my face. He looks into my eyes, just like he used to, and makes a silly noise like a bulk elk bu bu bugling for a cow. Coulter isn't alone. George Gerlard is with him. He swings off his horse and gives me a solid nod, which is at about emotional a greeting as I have ever seen him give. Oh, it's good to see these two men again. Coulter looks at the twisted hair and grins. When we rode up, Chief, I thought you had yourself a pet bu buffalo calf in camp. Twisted Hair doesn't understand a word Coulter says, but he smiles at the white man's enthusiasm. Coulter is dressed entirely in so soiled buckskin, except for his feet, which are shod in buffalo hide. <laughs> Moccasins. His face is burned as dark as the cheese, and I see there are a few more creases than the last time I saw him. His brown hair hangs behind his head like a horse's tail, nearly brushing the ground as he kneels in front of me. Drew Lard is dressed the same manner, but he hasn't changed much. He still looks like a large black bear just dressed up as a deer. He has two horses with him, one to ride and one to carry the furs they trapped and traded for. But besides the pals, my old friends have been doing mighty well for themselves. I look across the grassy plain beyond their horses, hoping the captain is with them, wondering if he'll be happy or cross to see me. But he is not there. I am disappointed, but not surprised. Coulter stands and pays his respects to Keith twist Chief Twisted hair, hair, and they begin speaking in hand talk. Drew Lard always was always better at this language, but he lets Coulter do the talking, and I see Coulter's hand talk has improved a good deal. We have, we've we come a long way to trade with you, Coulter says. Twisted hair nods. I must leave today to visit another camp. When I return, we will trade. I will also bring people from other camp to trade with you. How many days will you be gone, Coulter asks. Two days, three days at most. You may stay here while I'm gone. Lord knows we could use some of that, Coulter says. Drew Lard, Drew Lard nods. Later that night... After most of the Nez Pierce have covered themselves with their robes, I lie near Coulter and Drulard's fire, as I have done so many nights, times before, listening to them talk. Their conversation is interrupted by the arrival of Mountain Dog and the old woman, Watakuis. Mountain Dog is carrying the bag made from otter skin. Coulter invites them to sit down. That's one beautiful bag, Coulter says to Drulard. Have you come to trade for your bag? Drulard asks Mountain Dog. And with hand talk, Mountain Dog shakes his head and looks at Watakuis. We have... We... We came here to show you something, Wakui says in French. Droulard and Coulter stare at her in shock. French is Droulard's boyhood language. I didn't know you spoke French, Droulard says. Long ago, I had a Frenchman for a husband, and I learned to speak his words. But you never told us this one, Wadakis laughs. Your chiefs never asked me. They just assumed none of us understood your words. I can read some French words, too. She takes the outer bag from Mountain Dog and opens it carefully, with the respect big medicine deserves. Inside is a small book with a red leather cover and a brass clasp holding the book closed. These words are not French. I believe they're in Coulter's tongue. She hands the books to Coulter. Open it, Gillard says. Coulter unhooks the clasp. He stares down the first page, then at Watkins. Lord Almighty, this belongs to Captain Lewis. It says here, right here, it's his personal diary. Watkins looks at Gillard. I want Coulter to read the book to us. Where did Mountain Dog get this book? I will tell you when the reading is finished. Coulter will read in English, and then you will tell the words in French, and I will pass the words to Mountain Dog in our language. What are you all jabbering about, Coulter says. Ask. She wants you to read it. Out loud? Yep. You read, and I'll translate it to French best as I can. Coulter looks at Joulard, nods, and then scoots a little close to the fire to better see the words in the flickering light. He begins to read. And that is chapter one, guys. So I'm going to call this... 
um, video right here. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, it's shout out time. So my shout out goes to the odd ones out, and you should go check them out. And this is read aloud number one, and I'll see you soon.